to us a bit more here. Uh, Chris is, I asked Chris to uh, go ahead and preach, and, and every one of the people I've ever asked to preach in this place, usually I ask them to preach uh, on Saturday night. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> but this time, I told him on Sunday, last Sunday, and he's going to tell you the rest of the story. So here's Chris. Hallelujah. Oh, kids, kids, you can go with this lady here. <laughs> and that lady there, and that young man. Yeah, he's going to use the microphone. Go. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> She's afraid of you. She doesn't know who you are. Oh, this mother is my mother. <laughs> There we go. Happy? Can you hear? How's yeah. That? yeah. Cool. I like it. Are you happy? Can anybody not hear? Can anybody not hear? What? what? Can anybody not hear? Get close to you. Mike said, like, when did you start trusting Mike? Mike, <laughs> Come on, Ed. Mike. <laughs> You know, not only for us people who can't hear really well, but for YouTube, you turn the you turn the volume up so everybody on YouTube can hear us. If you've ever heard me preach, it's easy to hear me preach because I'm loud. Everybody else isn't as loud as me. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, I will. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, as Matt says. Um, that's usually the way he handles it. <clears throat> you get a call on Saturday night, late. <laughs> you know, he pulled on me one time, man. He calls me up. It was Mother's Day. Oh. That has got to be the one day any guy does not want to have to preach is on Mother's Day. <laughs> I even I worked on it. I worked on it, and I worked on it, and I worked on it. And I figured I was going to come here and straighten you all out, show you, and teach you everything you need to know about women. <laughs> That's the best I could come up with right there. That's about two and a half days worth of work. <laughs> a pastor was kind enough last Saturday to ask me after the, uh, a couple, yeah, last Saturday? Saturday. God, is it not long? You know, I noticed that too. I was sitting there and I was talking to Tammy. I said, there's those that are at a certain age that go, wow, it's only March. And then they can reach a certain age over 56 and you're going, God, it's already March! I know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, it was only March. <laughs> and uh, Matt had asked me if I would bring a word, if I had a word to bring. And uh, I didn't know. So I figured, you know, the Holy Spirit is on our pastor to ask you to preach. You probably have a word and don't know it. So out of obedience, um, I did. I came up. Um, last, uh, that particular Saturday, they had asked, uh, um, John Poundstone's pastor up there, Joy, and he asked, um, what we had experienced when we had gotten commissioned. And I remember standing, holding the sword with, uh, I believe there was eight other guys with me. And I could feel th this power of the Holy Spirit that I had never felt before, like this whole different side of the Holy Spirit. That was, it wasn't that I was gonna fall down thing. It was, I, I, I can't explain it, it was incredible. It involved a lot of crying out of a grown man. Um, <laughs> which was kind of cool, because Reuben was like this, and he had his arm in front of me, and you couldn't get a good picture of me crying like a baby. And um, I left, and I had, a different hunger so deep in me for the Word of God. I said this last service, I'll say it again to it. I don't want this to sound like boasting, but I've read the God out the Word of God out of obedience five times. Front to back. And I don't mean you know, see the old bread, good, good, good for me. Um, good for me, because that's a lot of work. But um, I don't want to mean it. Um, but now it was a different hunger. Just a hunger for the word and God, and anything to do with God, period. Um, 
we have a nice coffee table at home, and, and Tammy's always I got all these books of God all over it. She's always going, how many books am you going to read at once? And uh, do you know whichever one talks to me? Amen. That's the one I pick up. Uh, the let me see what my notes say, and then you know what? I'm gonna try this. Came down to this, Lord. Came down to pray. I want my flesh out of the way, Lord. When you say we're two or more in agreement, you are with us. And these gentlemen, women, ladies and gentlemen are with us. We want a word from you today, not from Chris, but from you, Lord. So Holy Spirit, I ask you to come upon me. Direct me through these notes that you've given me. Direct me through your word. And may your word be blessed today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord is near to all who call on Him. Amen. To all who call on Him in truth. Amen. Amen. I remember as this, uh, I'm going to go to, uh, if you want to go with me, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to go to Joel to, to uh, 228. Um, most of you know this, been around for a while. This is what was racing through my head as I was standing amongst these men that were getting commissioned and all these other mature men of Christ. Um, and after I have poured out my rain again, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. In those days I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. I will cause wonders in the heavens and on earth, blood and fire and the pillars of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness, the moon will be turned blood red before that great terrible day of the Lord arrives. And anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. My Bible, I got anyone. Anyone. It's highlighted, two different colors. <laughs> it's got a bunch of lines underneath it. That's right. I'm hoping that needs me. That's right. I'm hoping right. I'm in on that anyone part. You are. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I receive that right now. There will be people on Mount Zion and Jerusalem who escape, just as the Lord has said. Those will be among the survivors whom the Lord has called. Amen. I realize. For me at that point, that I am blessed. One of the parts of the hunger that I had received was to see how the Old Testament really did tie to the coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Before, to me, the Old Testament was a bunch of old cats who did a bunch of old cool stuff. And when you got to Judges, they kept pissing off God about every second time, and you had to go to another book. Yeah. And then God forgave them, and then they made him mad. And we got a whole chapter on that. And, uh, and when I was going to start reading on the Bible, man, I was flowing, and I got through Genesis, man, and I was on fire, and then I got to Exodus, and man, I was on fire, I was ready to tell my clothes to go to heaven, and then I hit something called Leviticus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and it seemed like just about forever it took me to get through Leviticus. And then I got through that, and I was praising the Lord, dancing around the house, and then what comes after Leviticus? Number of but we got through that too, so praise the Lord. He made you through it. He made it five times. Five times. And uh, praise the Lord for that. Um, one of the most important things that I have learned through what I want to share here in a little bit is Psalms 91. We all been standing on, I hope you all been standing on um, five and six. You know, so I wear my mask. I do wear my mask very promptly. Um, I'm the, the protector, the provider, and the, and the priest of my house. Part of what makes my house feel protected is I do wear a mask here I feel safe okay. for the distance um, and honestly I believe without a doubt Psalms 5 and 6 we do not have to fear this plague no. um, the guy I work for uh, he's, he's old sends me out shopping for him because he knows I got a mask I got a car full of disinfectant I can spray it I can rub it I can eat whatever you need man I can I can disinfect everything so we got it covered, and uh, it's great. I'm the guy's wife now, so it works out. 
Um, <laughs> where I got with it, um, when I was, was reading through this, I uh, pulled this back out, God had, had led me. I, I have to stay again. Let me slow down a little bit. Slow down. I wanted to go a different direction with this, with all the preaching when Matt asked me. But God kept going, we're getting close to Easter. Come okay. back over here. Come back over here. And I was going, well, God, but I got all this other really cool stuff. He goes, no, but, but I need you over here. Easter's coming. I said, well, well all right. Um, so I pulled out Psalms 91. And I really pulled out 14, 15, 16. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. I will satisfy them with long life and give them salvation. Amen. That was wrote by David. The difference between Saul and David is uh, Saul, he really wasn't the best leader. He didn't write nothing down. He wrote nothing down. We don't really know what Saul had to say or thought about anything about God. Except, you know, Samuel said, hey, come on, you're going to be the king. Right. Why? God wants, they, they wanted a king. So he gave him a king. Yeah, sure. They saw. <laughs> but then David showed up. And David wrote down everything. Good, bad, yeah. stuff about Beersheba, mm -hmm. stuff we can't talk about, it's PG related. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but David wrote down everything. Mm -hmm. When he fell short of God. When God showed up in glorious stuff. Yeah. You know? Uh, I believe it's... Uh, uh, one of the, the Psalms, uh, either 47, 27, I lived long to see the glory of the Lord in the land of the living. You know? Um, I read Psalms 145. If you want to do yourself a favor and miss church one Sunday, you know, I, we don't let Matt hear that. that He's gone. <laughs> Psalms 145, you read that thing with all your heart, and yes. it's like David is it. preaching to you, isn't it? Yes. Isn't it amazing? Awesome. I, I read that the other day, I read it before, but it, it was like it came alive in my living room. I was going, oh man, David is alive and well. Um, but since the commissioning, I've kind of gone back a little bit with the um, where does everything tie together to the coming of Jesus, mm -hmm. which is important. I, I, I never had a, an importance before mm -hmm. to the tying together of the two. And as Leviticus came along, the price we had to pay and the people that were rescued from Egypt, it was a bloodbath. Yeah. It was a downright bloodbath. Mm -hmm. We were slaughtering your best goat, your best sheep, um, turtle doves, yeah. pigeons, okay. all sorts of stuff. We, and, and it went on and it went on and, 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 and then we're, we're um, at one point, we're putting blood on the right ear of Aaron and his thumb and on his toe, and, and everybody's getting in the blood. And then, you know, that we're putting blood on the Ark of the Covenant, and there's just blood everywhere to pay for our sins. It's not, I repent. <coughs> what are we, what are we, and there's actually one point where you read it, the Levites gets to take a break and eat part of the offering. Mm -hmm. um, but it goes on. And then when we get done with that part, now this is a part of women I was afraid of last service too. Don't, don't kill the messenger. But when we all have a baby, a boy baby, outside the camp you go. Your time of impurity for the boy baby, seven days. But if you have a girl baby, it's 14 days. Now that one's between you and God. Don't, don't, don't ask, don't stop me outside. I don't know why 14 for a woman baby. <laughs> I'm married to a woman. I could probably answer that, but I'd rather stay happily married. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it goes on to little blemishes that we have on us. Where do you go? <laughs> Outside of camp. Yeah. Another seven days, 14 days. If you sit on a spot where somebody has been in their impurity, you got to wash off your clothes, put it in the river, and away tonight. What are you doing? <clears throat> naked now. No, you're naked. You got nothing to wear because it's dry now. <laughs> this was complicated to pay for our sins. Amen. We needed Amen. somebody to come Amen. and do something. This Amen. is Amen. And, and I want to even prove to you. Yes. Paul, anyways, comes to the conclusion, and I'll, I'll need to do that. Okay. Once, once we uh, let's see where we get where we're at in the notes right now. I should 
keep up on those. There's a blood offering, sin offering. And there it is. He was, if you want to prove me that he was 10, 13, I can prove to you. Yes. This, we tried this for a while, okay? And as I understand it, as the end of my, my uh, chapter comes, this is when we're doing our 40 years around Mount Sinai. This is going on. I didn't add this last service, but I happened to catch up on the science channel. Plus, the uh, Muslims are still doing this um, with the blood sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And they had this picture from a satellite in, in well, where satellites are, up there <laughs> in the sky. And, there's, and there's, they got a picture of this big dark spot. Now, I was outside working. I just came in and top part, and they were going, what's that? And they go, it's blood. And it's blood, blood. Wow. And, um, I'm going, what the heck's going on? And the old rancher started explaining it to me. He goes, that's the uh, Muslims. They're doing their annual sacrifice. Oh, wow. And it, it was, it, I was just breathtaking. And um, so let me get, get back here to Hebrews. Um, 10.13? No, 10.13? Yeah, that's where I'm going to go. <laughs> I was looking for page number 10.13. So let me set us to let us try, huh? 10.13. Now, this is what we say in Tenth Circuit. This was the sacrificial system. The old system in the law of Moses was only a shadow of the things to come, not the reality of the good things Christ has done for us. The sacrifices under the old system were repeated again and again and again, year after year, but they were never able to provide perfect cleansing for those who came to worship. If they could have provided provided perfect cleansing, the sacrifices would have stopped. For the worshipers would have been purified once for all time, and their feelings of guilt would have disappeared. But just the opposite happened. Those yearly sacrifices reminded them of their same sins year after year. So it wasn't working out so good. It kind of came to me, um, do we all know really who the first blood shed blood for our sins? I don't. Brother knows. God did. God shed him the first blood for us. Yeah, you can go here with me if you want. It's going to be in Genesis. We're going all the way to the front of the book now. Talk about jumping around. Um, 321 is going to read. And the Lord God made clothing from animal skins for Adam and Eve, his wife, mm -hmm. to cover cover our sins. They knew they were naked. Mm -hmm. It started with God. Um, okay. God has sent his only son because he really wants us. Yes. He wants us really bad. That's right. He wants us more than anything else. That's what he created us for. Mm -hmm. And I think of a story that's in the Max Licato book uh, it, 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 it runs parallel with the uh, story of the um, the people who got uh, they got picked up and paid. The story of the Max Licato is over in the bell for you in the uh, New Testament. Um, an old man, young man, sitting there at, at day labor. Truck pulls up, trucker, uh, farmer, I need help. Loads up a bunch of young guys, strong back, first thing in the morning. You old guy, young guy, get left behind. Um, again, same farmer comes by about noon. Loads up a whole bunch more. All along the way they go. Old man, young guy still sitting there, about the last two left. <clears throat> and um, finally, last hour of the day, the farmer comes again. Goes in there a couple more guys to finish out the day. Um, the old man and the, and the kid get on the truck. And the kid's a little worried about what he's going to get paid. And the old man looks at him and goes, Isn't it nice just to be wanted? Mm -hmm. Isn't it nice just to be wanted? And can you believe a God as big as this? Just wash us. Mm -hmm. Just wash us. And he's trying to make it easy on us. I mean, um, John 14, 27, straight out. I am leaving you a gift. I like the way mine translates because it says, most say peace, but mine says peace of mind and heart. Mm -hmm. This peace I give isn't like the peace the world gives. No. Um, I got to experience this. I got to experience this. I'm driving. I spend my, my, my prayer closet is pretty much the front end of my vehicles. I get in my car. Some of the best sermons ever, ever preaching were from the front seat of my car. Nobody got to hear them except the dog. 
<laughs> but I, I got saved many times in the front seat of my car. Listen, and the good Lord come up, the Holy Spirit drop in my car. Yeah, and I'm driving along, and again, it's another one of those crybaby times. I thought, oh God, God, give me your peace. I need your peace. God, why do I need your peace? And I literally almost could hear this audible voice go, why do you keep crying out for something I left behind? Just move over in it. Just get in it. It's there for you. And I literally closed my eyes and I pictured myself getting in the passenger seat. And this peace came on me. I pictured myself getting in it. And then I figured, you know, I'm driving the car, I probably should open my eyes. And then I did. But the peace of God came with me. So that was that was that was there. But I haven't um, there was another um, peace that I got to experience that was even more peaceful than that. All of my life, there has been a pressure that I have felt on my head, even though the Word of God has been in there, standing on it, focused on the Word of God, nothing negative going on. But I didn't realize this pressure until um, somebody had spotted something within me um, that was there. And uh, it was doubt. It was the sin of doubt. I had taken some time, I'd gone to 1 Kings, reading about Elijah, Ahab, yeah. um, Jezebel. Um, there's a point in here where Elijah's, uh, you know, he, he's already, uh, he's, he's dealing with the 400 um, um, prophets of Baal and the 450 of Asherah. And uh, he's basically telling them, would you, would, would you make up your mind? One minute they're believing him, one minute... They believe in Jezebel. Because would you make up your mind? And what I found was this cure for doubt. This part of the fine reading in our Bibles that a lot of us we don't read, kind of blow through it. Always read the fine writing. If it leads you on a rabbit trail, it's a good thing, believe me. And it's taken me 20 something years to follow those rabbit trails. But the cure for doubt. And I remember I confessed to the Lord to ask me. I asked him for forgiveness, for sin, because I was starting to doubt him. Mm -hmm. And I felt not only my head clear, but I felt for the first time in my life like this pressure just disappeared. Yeah. It just disappeared. Yeah. It was like, where has that been? And I can pick a day. I can pick a day. I was a young kid, probably a little bit older than her. And uh, I went to my mom, and my mom was something, told her the truth. She smacked me across the face, beat me, told me, I know when you're lying to me. I said, all right. So then I learned, now when some, an adult asks me a question, I've got to think of what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get weak. And I've carried that all my life. Part of what we learn in the Ed Cole stuff is entering and leaving. As we're changing different chapters in our life, don't drag that old stuff from that part of life into this part of life. Yes. If you're changing jobs, don't change, bring that with you. Get that dealt with. Leave it back there before. But if you leave that there, you will enter into something new and fresh. <laughs> Or you're just dragging that old stuff with you all the way through. Yeah, yeah. And I realized I've been dragging that stuff around since I was about eight, nine years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? And didn't even know it until it was gone. Yeah. And uh, I'm blessed now. Yeah. Because when the devil wants to come after me, I don't have to call Lana no more because I learned a long time ago. The devil's afraid of Lana. <laughs> so that's good. Devil don't mess with Lana. You can call my brothers in Christ. Don't get me wrong. I've got brothers in Christ. I'll call Lana when the devil's bothering me. <laughs> and, uh, the, uh, I can feel a pressure start coming. I make a decision, and then a pressure will start coming upon me, and I'm going, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I can say to that mountain now, and call it by name, part it, and tell it to go into the sea, and it does go. Yeah. It does go. Yeah. Part of dealing with doubt is uh, it also goes into, you know, what we know best, and I knew the rest of this, you know, we study the evidence of Christian faith, um, we, make, we make sure that we're saved, you know. Um, back in my drinking career, I was here every weekend getting saved. So I got saved a bunch of times. I don't, I, I, it stopped finally sooner or later. Faithfully study the Word of God, <coughs> pray without ceasing. Yep. And that's what we got to do. But Jesus is our Savior, but He's also our healer. Mm -hmm. Good and bad. The sin that He's working on me today, it's not going to be the same thing as working on you. 
Um, the sin comes and goes. You know, um, I thought when I showed up here at church, um, get rid of alcohol, get rid of drugs, get rid of pornography, and um, probably cussing. Mm -hmm. And it, it would pretty much be, I think, walking on water after that, right? After it all. Yeah, right. And then all of a sudden, I started learning about judgment. Come on. Where did that come from? Um, gossip. Oh, there's a good one. Um, you know, doubt. There's one right there. You know, there was all these other sins that it, they weren't obvious sins. I mean, they're not gonna they're not gonna throw you in jail because you're doubting something. They'll throw you in jail if you had too much to drink and you're driving down the road. <laughs> yeah. I figure if it didn't involve jail, it wasn't a sin. Yeah. What's kind of wrong with that? <laughs> so. Um, as I had dealt with anxiety, doubt, and questions, questioning God's voice, I had gone back to this. And I have watched it work since I had gotten that time and time again. Mm -hmm. And I realized that here is a man of God that is the last prophet of God. He's overtaken 850 <coughs> prophets of all Asher. Somebody from the other side. And Jezebel wants to get him. One woman. He runs! He starts running from Jezebel. God finds him in a cave somewhere and says, Elijah, what you doing? Goes, well, I'm hiding. What? Jezebel's after me. And God's kind of going, but you just, you just, you're 850, and, and, and God's kind of going. And, and God says, come out of there. That's and he still doesn't come out of there not right away. He's sitting in the back thinking about it for a little bit. And then he comes out. And what does he do? He bashes on to Alicia. Let's make it somebody else's problem. Mm -hmm. You know? I didn't get that for service either. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just had, had you replay it, but you see it all day. And um, so what I've learned about this Jezebel spirit, man, it is uh, it does not like oh man, it will do some damage in your head. Yeah. Yeah. And they also, um, Jezebel and Ahab had a thing going, and the Ahab spirit is also a spirit that we will make peace at any cost, even though it goes against the truth of what the Bible says, just to keep peace. Don't go down that road where Ahab went. It's not going to work out. We gird our loins with the belt of truth. Where is it? In the core of our body. It ain't on our feet. We shower our feet with the gospel of peace. Yeah, but that comes from our truth. And this is right around the core of your body. You can't get much more to your core than that. Some of us cores has a little bit more to work with. But um, <laughs> yes, it, it works. It works. And that is where the truth is coming from. Yeah. Right here. And whether we like it or not, I don't want to go to bed at night thinking, I'm part of this Ahab spirit because uh -huh. I made peace just, just whatever I had to do to make peace. I'm going to make peace because I still know what God's word said. Yeah. And when I go to bed, I know God's got me. My wife may not be real happy about what I said. Or my neighbor may not be real happy about what I said. Or somebody else may not be real happy with what I said. But on Judgment Day, I stand in front of one. Amen. And that's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, now Jesus has come. Now he paid his price. That was bloody too. I mean, that's got to be, uh, I mean, just as bloody as, as, as what we went through in Leviticus. Which is amazing to me. Like I said, I go back to all that I got to the beginning. I never had that desire to tie this Old Testament stuff with the coming of Jesus and us getting saved. But it's all ties together. It all points together. The angel of God is different than an angel of God. I went to a, a real theology guy, really respected. He says, if your Bible is all right with the, the old King James Version, the angel of God is actually Jesus. Yes, that's right. Our yeah. angel of, oh, God bless you. Yeah. Our, our <laughs> angel of God could be Gabriel, Michael, um, yeah. maybe John Travolta. The point of everything here is, is when Jesus came, our sins were dealt with upon that cross by the blood, oh. and now what do we got to do? Repent. In Jesus, what did Jesus do? We, we said earlier one of the things, how long do we got to pray for healing? You know what? Jesus was quick. Because yeah. he meant it. <laughs> right. You know what? Can you heal me? The blind guy. If you're willing. Yeah. Jesus, real quick. I'm willing, be healed. That was it. That was it. I want 20 minutes worth of this. You know, when I pray for healing, it takes me 20 minutes. 
you know, I don't know who I'm trying to convince, me or the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I got to know this. And, and everywhere, and then when the women, they threw the women down. Bam, adultery. You know, um, sin no more. That's it. Sin no more. Adultery. That seems pretty serious. But no, nope. that's the way Jesus wrote. We don't have to hide no more. Be truthful with God. Elijah hid. He went and hid. I want to tell you something straight out that I've learned, and I'm sorry that I've had to go through this. As uh, Lana has a saying for it, I'll let her say it if she wants to. If you are dealing with an issue in your life that involves sin, whether it's a physical, if you're drinking too much, if it's a negative thought, I don't care if you're judgmental gossiping. If you are being nagged by guilt and shame, that is not God trying to no. set you free of nothing. Amen. That is the devil coming after you, trying to convict you, you're trying to torment you, trying to get, he's going to get you in the middle of the night. Lord knows when you get over 50 years old, you get up more than once in the middle of the night. Lord, that is a perfect opportunity for him to get a hold of you and start thinking about it. And then your wife's going, why did you go back to sleep? And you got to deal with that whole thing and then wake up to it. And you're like, oh, let me just calm down here a little bit. So what we got is guilt and shame. God is not going to set you free that way. No, that's right. God is going to come to you and he's going to go. You want more? Can you done with it? Is it working out for you? All right. You know, we can do this. Hope. He's going to bring you hope. Right. He's going to preach you with love and grace. Yes, that's right. You know, grace. He's going to give you a loving pastor. Beautiful. He's going to go. That ain't nothing. I remember sharing a pastor one time. You know, I tried smoking pot one time. Bam! Right on my face, I landed. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Better call pastor. I know I'm smoking weed. Pastor, he goes, oh, I already heard. <laughs> <laughs> Is it all right if I go here, Matt? Yeah, Matt, I love it. And, and you know what? The brother comes up to me, and he's got a story to share about his experience. Come on, right. we both came to the conclusion. You know what? Walking with the Lord, smoking weed ain't gonna work for us. <laughs> I was kind of glad. I had three specialists, three special, oh, brain specialists, because I guess if you have like a more than three concussions, it's supposed to be bad for you. Um, so I've got an overachiever, <laughs> <laughs> alcoholism, and uh, yeah, let's just let's just say I got enough for all of us. Yeah. And uh, but all these specialists were telling me, um, oh well, you probably smoked this, and they were using words I didn't know. I mean, I'm, look at me, I got gray hair. I'm, I'm from that generation, man. And, like Matt, nah. yeah, exactly, hippie generation. You know, some guy pulled up in a car, you gave him twenty bucks, and you hope what you got was dope. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you don't know what it was. These guys got all sorts of doctor's names for this stuff, and these guys are telling me, you need, you need to be smoking this. You know, I'm going, look, man, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not interested in smoking pot. I just tried the one thing. I want to get out of here and go home. And then the next guy comes in and he goes, well, you know, they make these other things like this, and you can smoke that. I, I'm not really interested in smoking yeah. pot. And the third, well, I, I tell you, there was a little bit of relief in me because I saw the medical community taking a more natural approach. Then here, let me give you a pill. I can heal you a little bit. Here, take one of these, you won't, you won't get anxious. You know, oh, here, take one of these. Um, I was kind of glad to see that. I hope we get it down to diet and other things like that, but I'm sidetracked there, so I think you always bring me back. Um, if you reach a point, something's not, and this is it. You know, you want to know if you're sinning? You, wanna, you really want to know if you're questioning? If you reach a point in your life, I don't care what you're doing, if it ain't working no more, Probably seen it. Yeah. yeah. You're probably seen it. You know? I, uh. Tell it again. Praise the Lord. All right, I had the opportunity. Um, my best friend, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to do this again. My best friend, um, grew up with him, six, six years old. <coughs> Um, uh, I get a call from his mom. Richie's not doing good. And he's younger than me. God, if this is right, I had to put the snot right last night. <laughs> uh, Richie's not doing well. He's not doing well. Um, he's uh, got kidney problems and he's in intensive care. And, I'm not going to make it. Uh, I said, well, what, what do we got to accomplish? Because I believe the, right to the prayers of 
the uh, righteous are effective and powerful. Amen. So, you know, just praying something in general, I'm not that guy. Yeah, right. You know, if you want me to pray for you to be delivered from alcoholism, I'm probably going to find out who you're hanging out with first and see if I can pray that off of you first. Because yeah. you, you can be delivered from alcohol all day long and still hang out with the guys from the right. bar. I wonder, why am I getting drunk? Well, yeah. Yeah. so Amen. Um, Amen. Thank you, I got it. I got the information from mom. And uh, call Anna. I said, well, this, is, this is what we're praying for first. And there was two guys on that list that day. The other guy's still alive. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, and she says, well, what are we after, Chris? I said, first thing we got to do is get this guy stabilized and he doesn't die. Mm -hmm. So we prayed and we prayed. We prayed. We all prayed. Next thing you know, I got a phone call. Hey, he's doing good. He's good. He's stable. <laughs> they're taking him out of intensive care and they're going to go put him in a room. Yeah. Cool. Praise the Lord. And uh, I don't know. It seemed like a little what time went on. And all of a sudden I got a call. It was his, it was his son. And um, I said, oh, yeah, Ian, how you doing? He goes, well, Dad passed away last night in his sleep. I said, what? He was, everything was, like, on the way. And he was first on the list to get the, get the extra powers. And, um, well, he passed. So they had a uh, ceremonial life for him. And they asked me to go, of course, you know, the first friend the guy had. And as I got there, um, you know, we were all talking about this, and then the, there was the time that we all, we all get together and talk about the good times that we, that we had, knowing the gentleman. And I'm figuring, well, you know, I'll do my turn and go up there. And so I went up there, and as I'm sitting in the chair, um, I got, I remember talking about how we used to go set stuff on fire, and then we made the neighbor kid eat poop, catch yeah. them, throw those tizzy rolls. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit had dropped upon me, because everybody was so sad that he died young. But the Holy Spirit just came all over me, and it was like, I could not, it wouldn't come out, except for the Word of God. And what came out, and, and I, I said it earlier, again, and as I said that, I don't mean to sound like boasting, but I have read the Word of God. I've been through it five times. And there's one thing I know, there's one, one thing I know for sure, is um, there's one day in our lives that we have no control over. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. There's one day we got no say so over. Mm -hmm. right, and that's the day we go. Yeah. So Richie's not here today. Why? Because it was his day. And the whole vibe on the place just lifted. Mm -hmm. Everybody was cheerful. Everybody was joyous. Mom wasn't even crying no more. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit had put on me to, to wait and to pray for the, the family because the family really has this horror story to tell about dealing with this during COVID and how they were like locked out for 14 days and they're having to stand behind this glass window looking at, at, at dad dying in there and it's, it's like, oh man, it was, oh, it was creepy. And, um, and God put it on my heart. He says, I want, you to, I want you to pray for the family. And there's a bunch of people walking around the, in the building still, his friends. And, um, but I had to wait until we had grandma, mom, um, wife, um, son and daughter together. And I was just going to let that happen. Just God, if they ask you, you're going to make this happen. So just shut up, Chris. And I waited. And so one lady came up next to me and she goes, huh? Ah. She goes, hi, I'm so so. I'm so so. And we talked a little bit. I said, I'm going to pray for these guys sometimes. She goes, oh, I'm from Living Stones. Oh, you are? You want to pray with me? She goes, yeah, 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 I'll pray with you. Okay. Well, what? Right now, I said, no, just wait. God said, this time. So next thing you know, the family's together. And I said, this is it. So I grabbed her, we grabbed them, and we started praying. I had my eyes closed, I, I, and I did one of them Jesus prayers. It was quick, it was short. It was about bringing them the peace that they needed during this time of grieving, to be able to let go of that horrible experience they've been through, and just to find the peace that God has left behind in this world for them. Yeah. And I opened my eyes, and the whole bar, the whole bar is gathered around, all holding hands, reaching out, touching and laying hands on them, and they're all up there. It's, it's a bigger amen than I've ever even heard of church. You know, except for maybe Joel Osteen, but that's, that's Joel. Okay, that's Joel. And uh, it was just, just, uh, it's important to somebody. I don't know why. God told me that some of this stuff is, you know, some people get a chance, get caught up on some sleep, but some people need to hear this. So if you feel kind of like it's time to knock off, it's okay. God kind of had me out because there was other stuff I wanted to preach on. But this is, I believe, what God has, has given me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus has paid the price. 
Our deed is done. Amen. It's easy now. Amen. It's easy for him. Now, how long do we want to argue and carry our crap around? <laughs> that become, I, I can still see that, right? Second service? Okay. <laughs> 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 now, I'll, now I'll carry it around for a while. <laughs> you know, that's going to get really miserable. And then Tammy gets mad at me. Then we're both miserable. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I kind of shorten it down a little bit. Keep it down to, you know, some self pity maybe two, three days. Until <laughs> <laughs> somebody feels really sorry for me, brings me some ice cream. Then it's oh, there it is. <laughs> But this is what I see. I was imagining myself this morning. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm imagining myself this morning, and I'm sitting there, and uh, Tammy's on vacation, and I got my dog next to me, and I'm thinking, okay, well, where's Jesus? The right hand of God. Well, so Snoop got to play Jesus. That's my dog's name. Snoop. Snoop was Jesus. I got to play God. And so I'm God. And I'm thinking, this is the way it probably comes down from up there. Okay? I'm down here. God's there. And Jesus is right there. Yeah. So I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. God, please forgive me. All my heart, I am sorry to doubt your word, what you say in your word. Your promises are your promises, God, and I am sorry. Would you please forgive me for doubting you? Mm -hmm. So now I'm up. God, and Chris is dialing up. He's got something. He goes to Jesus. Says, Jesus is my advocate. It's got to right. go through him. He's the one to stand in the gap for me. So God looks over at Jesus, what you think? Because he had that in my book. Okay? <laughs> so let's forget about it. Okay, I'm going to go down. So <laughs> here goes Chris again because he can't let it go. Right. Dear God, <laughs> again, please forgive me. Now I see God going, Jesus? <laughs> I see him up there. What? 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 I've already asked for it. I've already been given it. Yes. Finally, finally, I just feel God go, Chris, why don't you try forgiving yourself? Amen. Why don't you try forgiving yourself? Amen. All right. Amen to that. Thank you. Thank you. It came from God, too. Please. I, I thought he wanted me to go a different direction through all this. It's been a while. Especially the blood and gut stuff. That's good. That's good. Um, and you know, again, I say that the hunger that has, has changed in me since the, the studying, my studying habits are so much more different now. Um, something as simple as I remember Matthew, when you, if you haven't checked it out, when you start out Matthew, you get the lineage. And I'm going, fine. Yeah, what a wonderful way to get people hooked on the wire. Amen. But you know what we call Jesus? Who's Jesus? Lion is, or he's the lion, the tribe of Judah. That comes up in there. And I'm not even going to go into the part about a hooker being in there. <laughs> yeah, you know? I have to explain that one away some way. And, um... <coughs> The most important thing that I've really come to get through all of this is uh, part of us in Philippians, and uh, um, as I said last time, any self-respecting Christian, I did have taken a little bit out of context. But let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Right. And what did Jesus say to everybody when they were building him up? I only do what I see the Father do. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I want so that one. Went to the cross. Yes. I want that one. You know, a little common sense goes a long way. Proverbs 21, 16 reads, depending on your, your translations. He who wavers from uh, common sense will find himself in the company of the dead. Others say, understand you. Um, I'd rather stay in the common sense of stuff. The devil's not going to tell me to pray for somebody at the dollar store. The devil's not going to tell me because that guy cut me off to wave at him and not use all my fingers. <laughs> there, there's just a lot of common sense that goes with where we need to be with God. And we need to be in touch with our own common sense also. So we're responsible for that also, along with following the Word of God, knowing the promises of God, knowing 
And I, I hope and I pray, that's a prayer for, for you guys, for our, all churches, every Christian, that you get so hungry for the Word that you want to see how this old stuff ties together with the new stuff. Because it's all tied together. Oh, yeah, all tied Before together. I thought it was a bunch of old guys who did a bunch of bad stuff, and then you get to Judges, and you can't get past half a chapter, and, and, we're, and we're messing up, and God's got to forgive us. Then he's mad at us, and he's got to forgive us. And the next guy comes on, he's mad at us, and he's got to forgive us. And it's like, it goes on and on in Judges. And it's like, okay, but I understand now how that fits together, yep. and how we needed to save. Yeah. And he sent us one oh, himself. Amen. I have, I was here on a Wednesday night and I, I just wanted, to, it was on my heart again. Oh, God, we're not keeping anybody late. We are to make a sacrifice at Thanksgiving. I didn't get it for, you guys already know, I was to get this first service, didn't get this. Um, you know, you need to be content. One of my issues, my sin right now is coveting. You know? People got nice new cars. Nice boats. They get to work. Now I'm reaching that age. They get to work in air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a wrongs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. But you know what? Because of, God bless, because of COVID, I am really happy I have a home way away from all the crazy people in the city. Mm -hmm. I'm not hooked up to power. I'm out there, me and my wife, and the Lord, and our two dogs. And I have never been so content in my life. Yeah. And I've been out there since 1988. And I have never come to be as content. Amen. To be at home as I am now. God's good. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. you know, and I have all these old vehicles that are breaking down. You know, I am so content. I don't got to worry about parking next to you at the grocery store and having you nick my paint. <laughs> I don't got to worry about that. I, got, I don't got to worry about getting the window down. It don't go down. <laughs> and then, if, then if you hit a bump hard enough going home, it goes down by itself. My <laughs> tenant goes, why don't you fix it? And it wore out again. Thank you, Lord. Leave it wore out. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, now if we had a new car, oh, man, I'd be really worried about that. You know, and I don't have to make a payment. Amen. Praise the Lord. I can clear her kind enough to bless us at one point. Mm -hmm. So content, not realizing it or seeing it. Tammy is going through some medical issues and, and uh, she forgot to pick up a medicine she needed. Um, very important medicine. Nor did they know it. They just figured they were going to bless us because Chris's cars were falling apart. I do so for the guy. And the snow was like 100 feet deep. I mean, I didn't stand a chance to, to, to go get the medicine for Tammy. She needed it. She put it off. And, and God, I hope she's not watching this. I'll be in so much trouble. And I had to call Mike on the phone. I said, my brother, I thank you for this car. More so has it been a reliable piece of equipment that I can trust and count on. Right now, this is actually almost... It could be, it could turn into a life-saving event. I have to get this medication for Tammy, and I can't get them through the snow with anything else I own. Thank you, Lord. Thank so content. Thank you guys for that. Amen. Praise um, the Lord. So find yourself. You don't have to be happy with everything. You don't have to. Be content with what you got. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We got it. Yes. Um, so I'm going to leave you with... Uh, We'll share the story again to you. Um, God, I wanted to skip that, but I guess I need to be obedient. Most of you have heard the story. Some of you have, some of you haven't. So whoever needs to hear this from you. Um, my mother-in-law, a long time, um, was passing away. Quite a few years for this to occur. And she reached the point where she was in the comfort room. And we just keep her in the comfort room. Everybody's going, she's waiting for something. She's waiting for something. We don't know what it is. She's waiting for something. 
And I'm going, Mom, okay, she's ready for something. Yeah. And I, got I know she was afraid to let go because the Jehovah's Witnesses had thrown her out of church because she was smoking. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, I can't. I can't have a relationship with God if you're smoking. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we got this church. Amen. 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 Tommy Barnett of the Dream Center says, if you don't got beer cans and empty cigarette butts in your parking lot, you're preaching to the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> so as, uh, as, as we're coming back uh, on one of these trips, and everything, it, it was all God-oriented, because everything just kept falling into place. To that. Just, it was just this, this chaos. And there was all these people around, and just chaos. And God just had this thing orchestrated for me. I was going, wow, you know, I'm just going to stay out of the middle of this and, you know, drive the car and do what you need me to do. And um, here I am, God. And I got to, uh, as we were walking up after uh, taking a break from being in the hospital, this, uh, Tammy's daughter comes running up and she goes, oh, this uh, caretaker, old caretaker lady came up and says to uh, uh, play this song for mom in her ear. And it was, I can only imagine. Oh. Now that song is a song for me that when I'm I'm down, when I'm out, yeah, I, I don't need the word. No. I got it. I know. I know that song is etched on my heart. Yes, yeah. yeah. beautiful. And I'm walking in. I'm going. God's going to ask me to do something. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, God. <laughs> and I sat down in the chair, and I swear it felt like it was a physical foot kicked me in the butt <laughs> out of the chair. And Tammy saw me walking up to her mom to whisper in her ear, and Tammy caught it. She goes, I knew God was moving at that time. Mm -hmm. And I started whispering in her ear. I said, you know, you're at a point right now, and I called her mom. Mom, that you get to really find out what it is like to walk alongside with Jesus. Mm -hmm. you got the eyes right now to see the glory of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you're surrounded right now by his glory. You know, you are, can be on your knees. You know, through your knees where you fall. You can sing with him. Everything. And you will always know, always worship him. And when that day comes, that day has come for you, that you are in the presence of the Son, God Almighty. And she opened her eyes for the first time. And a tear came down the side. <clears throat> and I honestly believe at that point she could see Jesus Amen. she could see her family all at the same time she let go I don't know a couple minutes later they come walking in still pulling the plugs she gone she was okay praise the Lord I hope that's for somebody I wasn't I really have shared that a few times around the church I didn't really feel it's necessary to do it again but God told me this morning, Bob's going to pick, I can only imagine, that came in, so I went, oh, gee, thanks, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Are we great now, yeah, Bob? Amen. 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 I know, Pastor, because, you know, he, he doesn't shut you down. You know, hey, hey, Matt, I think maybe this. He goes, I don't know, let's try to find out. <laughs> no, if the Holy Spirit don't show up, we won't do it no more. <laughs> no, no. How much easier does it get than that with like, some of these organized religions? You know? What are you going to do with that guy with his hair over the collar preaching mine? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to let you know. You want to know how much God loves you? Mm -hmm. Let me try that again. You want to know how much God loves you? Amen. 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 That was kind of good. <laughs> you want to really know how much God loves you? Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. I'm going to have to up here. Ephesians 1 4. You can check me out, write them down, study them at home. You want know to study them? Put them on a card. Put them in the card. That's good for them. Amen. Long ago, even before He made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be blameless and holy in His eyes. Amen. This side of heaven, there ain't nothing above His eyes. And it backs it up with Colossians 1 22. Through the death on the cross, in his human body, as a result, he brought you into the very presence of God, and you are blameless and holy as you stand before him without a single fault. Period. Amen. Done Thank deal. You. 
wrote down in the Word of God, and you can go ahead and take this to the bank with your lower corners and, and, and check it in, because that is the Word of God. Amen. So, do yourself a favor. If you want those scriptures, I'll give them to you, and you can write them down. i got those scriptures in my car, uh, always in the, in the thing there. And if anybody's interested, i got three left up here. I did write down Psalms 91 when this COVID thing started to hit. There's some other stuff, 14, 15, and 16, I think are great. I've got, I've got extras here. If you guys want them, please come and get them. Help yourself to them. They are. You're not going to go wrong reading Psalms 91. No. no. The best one is going to be Psalms 141. Seven times a day. That's the Old, old, old Testament cats to get healed. Seven times a day, right? Seven times a day, they write that. Okay. Well, you guys don't seem to be in a big hurry either, or you have to go to sleep. I want to read you this one thing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Praise you, said thank you, that's somebody I love. This is, you know, Matt's got uh, his own little song that he, he, he likes that puts him to sleep. Um, this is one that I started standing on, and I shared it that Wednesday night. So I would like to read it to you and let you guys go on this word, or not word, dismiss us. Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. I don't concern myself with matters too great or awesome for me. But I have still and quieted myself just as a small child with his mother. Yes, like a small child is my, is my soul within me. O oh, Israel, put your hope in the Lord. I'd like to say a couple things about people when they die. Uh, when somebody that knows the Lord dies, a lot of times not just their guardian angels, but Jesus will be with them. And heaven opens up to them. And if they, if they have things still in their heart, that they haven't got rid of, they get that time. They get, they get that time to get it out. And I found that out through her mother-in-law because we're, I'm there with her and so is other people. And I, get, I asked her a couple times, if, if is your angel, do you see an angel? And she says, yeah. And I kept telling her, go with your angel. She says, I'm not ready yet. She's seen heaven open up, and I said, go with your angel. She said, I'm not ready yet. Well, she was getting ready. She, she wasn't got rid of stuff here. And another thing is, when I do leave their body, they look down and say, I love you. They, they, they acknowledge the love they have for you and their families before they we don't hear it but it's there it's in your spirit. Amen. Amen. thank you Mike. my plan is get ready now yeah get right stay right so when you get there don't have to think about it That's right. just check out and wait to your family game see ya gotta be born again See you later. That's right. So get right and stay right. So Lord, we thank you for allowing us this time. We thank you, Lord, for the word. We take the word that you gave us today, God. Holy Spirit, I know you gave somebody, in it, everybody in this place, something. Amen. So we put aside the stuff we didn't get. But we take what we did get and we receive it by faith. And thank you, God, for it. And Lord, Lord, thank you for letting us uh, give. We are, we are excited to give. We are happy, hilarious givers because we understand your economy. It really works. We praise you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This evening we're going to come back here and praise the Lord for a while. Yes. Uh, at 6 o'clock, yeah. Thank you, Chris. That was good. Thank you, Chris. That was good. That was good. That was good. The Lord. It's good to see you guys.